Transposition is what we call it when we take a piece of musical material like this and put it in another key like this. But what's the process of learning this skill? Well, today you're going to find out. I'm Alec Wasserman and you're watching Wasserman Music. <laughs> Okay, before we get started, I just want to say this. Education is not an exact science. There are other people who teach transposition using different methods than what I use. What I'm going to cover in this video is my own classical piano method of learning the skill. I'm hoping that you'll still get something out of it, even if you play a different instrument or if you play piano in a different style. When you go to music school as a piano major, the main reason that you'll hear about why you need to learn transposition is to work with singers. Let's say you're working with a singer on Das Wandern by Schubert. In the piece's original key of B flat major, the singer will have a range of F4 to F5. But let's say that your singer, for one of a variety of reasons, is more comfortable singing that in D4 to D5. That means you'll have to transpose the piece down a minor third into G major. Here's the piano intro in the original key. And here it is again in your hypothetical singer's comfortable range. But I don't think that argument is fair either to singers or to the development of the skill. In order to move a piece of music from one key to another, you first have to be able to use all of the skills that are inherent to playing that piece of music in the original key. Then you have to be able to both aurally and visually conceive of that music in the other key. And in more difficult music, you may have to change fingerings, change the octave you're playing in, or make other changes. In short, in my opinion, if you can transpose well, there is nothing you can't do on the piano. The biggest misconception about transposition is that it can only be learned once you've reached an advanced level, but I'm going to show you why that's not true. As long as you're playing music that only uses the first three scale degrees, you can easily transpose between C major, F major, F sharp major, and G major. In the keys of C, F, and G, then you're going to be using only consecutive white keys. In the key of F sharp, the concept is exactly the same, except you're on black keys. I call this the Mi-Re-Do tier of transposition because that's how these scale degrees are represented using movable do solfege, which I highly recommend introducing for this purpose. As an example, let's look at hot cross buns. A lot of traditional tunes like this don't really have a known original key, but due to its use with the recorder in public schools, hot cross buns has come to be associated with the key of G major. As you'll see, it can be played on the white keys with just fingers two, three, and four. Here it is again in the key of C. It's very similar. And again in the key of F sharp. Same concept but on black keys. Pentascales, also known as five finger patterns, are the first five pitches of a key played with consecutive fingers. Let's take G major, for example. This is what the scale would look like from bottom to top in one octave. Here's what a G major pentascale would sound like. No matter what key you're playing in major or minor, you're going to use the same fingering for pentascales. You'll start with pentascales in C major and G major, since they both use only white keys. 
then you'll gradually build your way up so that you're playing pentascales in all major and minor keys. Once you've become comfortable with your pentascales, they serve as a really useful guide for transposition. As long as you're playing music that stays within a pentascale, all you have to do is adjust your starting pitch and your key signature, and you're well on your way. Of course, you cannot build the skill overnight, but it's certainly worthwhile. Let's look at Romance from Little Sweet on Five Note Patterns by Heinrich Wolfhart. The whole piece is written to be played with both hands in a D minor pentascale. Here's the A section. <laughs> If I wanted to play the same piece of music in F sharp minor, all I have to do is put my hands in that pentascale, mine my key signature, and use the exact same fingerings. It sounds like this. You probably noticed that my hands looked more crowded in the F sharp minor pentascale than in the D minor pentascale. I'm bringing this up to illustrate that even though the concept remains exactly the same, pentascales can vary in difficulty. My second tier of transposition can be extended to include pieces which have ranges just outside of a pentascale. This is because by and large, fingerings can be maintained moving from one key to another if the music is just greater than a perfect fifth in range. Don't get me wrong, this is more difficult than keeping the music within a pentascale, but you still, generally speaking, don't have to adjust your fingering going from key to key. Let's demonstrate this using London Bridge, which has a melodic range of a major sixth. But this time, I'm going to show footage of one of my students playing this as proof that transposition really can be taught at an early stage. The final level of transposition is the broadest. It comes when a piece of music consistently moves outside of a pentascale. It's at this point that you need to account for fingering differences between different key signatures. This is largely to accommodate for different combinations of black and white keys. Let's look at the A section of this Bach Polonaise. Here it is in the original key of G minor. I've written in the fingering for the trickier right hand material at the end. contrast, here's the same chunk of music, a tritone apart in C sharp minor. This is the most distant possible key from the original, so you'll see that I've altered my fingering quite a bit. And there we have it. That's my quick guide to teaching and learning transposition at the piano. Do you have any transposition tips of your own? Leave those in the comments. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll see you next time.